Welcome to the STEM Space at Home In Depth. I'm your host, aerospace engineer Claire Meshkat, and today we're taking a deep dive into learning a little more about how scientists study our moon. Would you consider living on the moon? NASA is planning to send humans back to the moon and establish a lunar base for humans to live and conduct research there. But what does it take to live on the moon? Think back to the previous missions we completed. For food, we designed a hydroponic greenhouse to grow plants in space. We also learned about how to design spacesuits and stay protected from extreme temperatures, meteorites, and other hazards in space. The moon has a very thin atmosphere, so we will need to wear a spacesuit to breathe and stay protected. Make sure you check out these videos if you haven't already. Now, there are a few more critical problems we need to solve if we are hoping to survive without the comforts of home. We need oxygen to breathe and water to drink. About 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Do you know what percent of the Earth's water is usable for drinking? Less than 3%, and two-thirds of that is locked up in ice caps and glaciers. But what about the rest of our solar system? Is there any water out there? Well, it turns out there are several celestial bodies thought to possess liquid water beneath their surfaces, and many more that have water in the form of ice or vapor. Water is also found in comets and asteroids and dwarf planets like Ceres. The atmospheres and interiors of the four giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, are also believed to contain enormous quantities of water, and their moons and rings have substantial water ice. Strong evidence of oceans has been identified beneath the surface of five icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn. Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto at Jupiter, and Enceladus and Titan orbiting Saturn. NASA's Cassini mission has revealed Enceladus as an active world of icy geysers. Recent research suggests it may have even hydrothermal activity on its ocean floor, an environment potentially suitable for living organisms. So what about our own moon? How do we look for that precious liquid life source there? Let's hear from the experts at Southwest Research Institute of San Antonio, Texas. Can you imagine a place that is so dark that it never receives any sunlight, and so cold that if a particle were to find its way there, it would become frozen and trapped? Regions like this exist on both the north and south pole of the moon and are known as permanently shadowed regions, or PSRs. We are able to use an instrument known as the Lyman Alpha Mapping Project, or LAMP, to essentially flip a switch and look inside of these PSRs. Hi, my name is Lizeth Magana, and I am a physics student at the University of Texas at San Antonio. For my PhD work, I use the LAMP instrument to look inside of these PSRs and find where water ice may be present. Now I want you to try an experiment with me at home to see how there are phases of the moon. You will need a ball or something you can shape into a ball like Play-Doh, and then a lamp or a flashlight. If you use a lamp, you may want to take off the lampshade for the best effect. Now, pretend you are the Earth and you are looking at the moon. As the moon orbits you, you'll see different amounts of the moon illuminated or lit up by the sun. When the moon is between you and the sun, we don't see the moon because it is lit up on the opposite side. Now when the moon goes on the opposite side of the sun, we'll see the full moon. Still, there are some parts of the moon that never get sunlight. Here we have the south pole of the moon. We see that as time passes, different regions of the moon are illuminated, just like we saw earlier. But we also see that there's regions that always remain dark, and these are the permanently shadowed regions. We see that these PSRs coincide with some of these really deep craters, and that's because the sun isn't at the right angle to reach the bottom of the craters. Since there's no direct solar illumination, these are some of the coldest regions in the entire solar system. They're actually so cold that if water molecules got inside of them, it would be too cold to move and would be stuck. This is why over billions of years, we have a buildup of these water molecules within the PSRs and why we look inside of them for water ice. Thank you, Lizeth. It's encouraging to hear that there is great potential in finding water, at least frozen water, within the shadowy craters of our moon. 
But how are we able to see that it is there before we can make the trip? Can we just use a telescope? Let's hear from another researcher at Southwest Research Institute who is working on this project. The concept is actually surprisingly simple. It is not that dissimilar from how we as humans observe and understand the world around us in visible light. What we generally see around us in the world on a daily basis, we see through reflected light off of the surfaces which we observe. The particular colors that are reflected off of these surfaces tell us a number of different things, particularly the composition of those surfaces. This stony iron meteorite is a perfect example of this concept. With our eyes, we can see two very different components in the composition of this meteorite. The metallic portion, mostly iron with some nickel, is very reflective, typical of metallic objects. While the crystalline portion, composed of olivine crystals, is not very reflective, and like most crystals, is somewhat transparent, and in this case, letting yellow and green light pass through. So the reflection of visible light can tell us a lot about the composition of material objects. That makes sense that we could possibly look at the craters with telescopes and see that there is something in them that looks different or reflect, reflects light differently than the surrounding areas. But did you know that there is a light that our eyes cannot see? That's right, radio waves and microwaves are a type of light that our eyes cannot see. And so is what is called infrared light, which is what the remote control for your TV uses to turn on. You can't see that beam of light shooting out of the remote but if you turn on your phone camera and put it in selfie mode and point it at the remote when you press the button, you might just capture it. Ultraviolet light is another form of light that our eyes cannot see. You may have heard this type of light also referred to as black lights, and it is the harmful light that gives you a sunburn if you are out in the sun without sunscreen. Both infrared and ultraviolet lights can be used to see things that our eyes cannot see and help scientists discover if there is indeed water on our moon. Scientists, like those at Southwest Research Institute, use special machines that shine these different wavelengths of light onto substances to get a full picture of what substances might be on other planetary bodies. Let's do a quick experiment with ultraviolet light. If I shine an ultraviolet light on this water, nothing happens. But now look at this tonic water. It doesn't look any different to our eyes right now because it contains a chemical called quinine. When I shine the ultraviolet light on it, it absorbs the energy from that light and appears to glow as it loses that energy. In a similar way, when the scientist shines UV and infrared light at the moon, they may be able to tell us what is on the surface that our own eyes didn't catch using visible light. NASA has found water on the moon, and it isn't just in the shadowy craters. NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA, confirmed on October 26th of 2020, for the first time, that water is on the sunlit surface of the moon. This discovery indicates that water may be distributed across the entire lunar surface. This is a big deal because the moon doesn't really have an atmosphere that should keep water anywhere near where the sun's shining but somehow it is. And we really could use that water to be able to live on the moon. Sophia offered a new means of looking at the moon. Flying at altitudes of up to 45,000 feet, this modified Boeing 747 jetliner with a 106 inch diameter telescope reaches above 99% of Earth's water vapor in the atmosphere to get a clear view of space. Using its infrared light camera, Sophia was able to see the specific wavelength unique to water molecules and discovered a relatively surprising concentration in the sunny Clavius crater. The data will add to the work of future moon missions, such as NASA's Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or VIPER, to create the very first water resource maps of the moon for future human space exploration. So it looks like we may have some options when it comes to locating and perhaps even using the water that is on the moon. Try out the demonstrations I did today and make sure to check out our other videos to learn more about how we might one day 
live on the moon.